Hey there, how's it going? What's going on? This is Kevin Seconds, and you are tuned in to the Ramble Transmissions podcast, uh, either on YouTube, where you can actually see me, uh, and or uh, just the audio version, which is distributed, I think, on Spreaker. It starts there, and wherever it goes, it goes. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, yes, indeed, I've I've begun the... Uh, I jump back into the world of podcasting. Uh, and those of you who know me or who have followed my endeavors probably remember my many attempts at doing podcasting. Going back to the early, I think the late 90s, the early 2000s, um, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into it because it's boring. But let's just say that I've been, I've done it and uh, stopped doing it and done it again and stopped doing it. Uh, this time I'm really going to make a, a, a an effort, M- mainly because look, I'm I'm older, I don't go on the road a lot, I don't really want to go and work at shitty jobs, or if I do, at least I want to have something fun to look forward to. I I have a lot of stuff to look forward to. Uh, I've got a great life, great wife, great pets, great friends. Uh, I write a bunch of shitty songs. Okay, they're not all shitty. Uh, I paint a lot of shitty paintings. Okay, they're not all shitty. Shitty. I'm being I'm being silly. I I get shit for being uh, self-deprecating from a couple of my friends, and I'm trying not to do that. I wouldn't say that this is a, a New Year's resolution, but uh, I'm really working to not do that. By the way, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Uh, we're here, 2023. The date is January 12th. Is that right? Yes, January 12th. <sighs> okay, and. Um, this is my second attempt at doing this episode, so I'm hoping to get through it. Uh, I'm really trying to keep the 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 length of these uh, the this particular podcast down to 30, 30 minutes, thirty five minutes. I don't want to go too long. Um, the idea of, originally for this podcast was I was on tour uh, doing uh, solo stuff a lot. I was out by myself. In my van, in my Ford Econoline van, driving uh, all up and down, uh, all across the country and up and down the coasts and uh, going to Europe every once in a while. And I was doing all the driving and I would need to stay awake because I'd have like a 300 mile trek or a 500 mile trek. And uh, I, uh, you know, coffee is sometimes, you know, used to work a lot better than it does now. Uh, but I would need ways to, f- to figure out ways to stay awake, and I started to kind of keep an audio journal, and then I decided to start doing, like, live streaming. There was an app. Do you guys remember an app called Periscope? Um, it was around for a few years, and I got into it. It was just something you could download on your phone, and you could literally live stream from your phone uh, to wh- whomever was interested and um, I got into it for a while, and then I kind of was sporadic and, and whatnot. But I used it to try and stay awake, and it was good. Um, I just set up, set my phone up on the mount in my car, in my van, start rambling about shit. And um, I got a little bit of a following, not a massive one, but it was a lot of fun, and it just kept me awake. It kept me, so my mind kind of a- active and alert, if you will. And I did it for a while, and then I just kind of lost interest. I know I thought, what am I doing, really? Except I'm just sitting here talking about myself, um, and I kind of put it down. And then people, you know, I got started getting people going, "Hey, man, you know, are you going to do any more of the the podcast? That was great. I really, it's cool. You talk about stuff that's going on that, you know, uh, shit at home and your your, you know, whatever." And so. I always kind of had it in the back of my mind that I would do it again and I would try and start it up and then I'd just say, eh, I got too much other stuff going on. But I was in, I've always loved podcasting. I've always, uh, there, I've, you know, I primarily, these days when I'm traveling, I listen to more podcasts than I actually do music. And um, I just said, screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to do it again this year. So I decided to start earlier, th- earlier in, in 2023 and uh, re re reignite the Ramble Transmissions podcast. And while I'm at it, why not start a second podcast? I mean, as if I got nothing else going on, right? So I'm starting a new podcast. I've already made the announcement on social on over social media, but uh, I I I am not announcing a name yet because I'm still I'm I'm like ninety percent sure I have the name for it, but I'm gonna wait until I'm like. 99% sure and then I'll make the announcement and and that podcast will be different 
this is just me blabbing, rambling. Am I out of focus? Um, the new one will be more interview based, and um, it, that was a tough call too because, uh, especially within the punk rock, hardcore, underground music world, there are some really great podcasts, and I'm not going to name them all now. I'll, I'll talk about these throughout the uh, upcoming uh, episodes, I'm sure. But um, I during COVID, especially, I ended up doing a lot of interviews via podcasts and um it was it was great i liked the visual ones i'm gonna make them visual like this here so you'll be able to watch it on youtube and, and you can listen to it if you just want to listen to it in uh, using whatever app or or website uh that distributes this stuff i'm still kind of getting used to how things are now it's a little bit easier to do a podcast you can literally just do something on your phone and up upgrade it up, upload it and you're 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 on you're on apple itunes and and all the other places look at my hands look at me waving like a lunatic um so there's that and um i've already got interview guests uh lined up i've talked to a few people i did my first test run with my dear friend chris sherry uh world-renowned artist and wonderful guy and uh, we did it over Zoom, and it was great. It was so much fun. Uh, I, I asked him to do it because I knew uh, I'm comfortable with him. He and I go out for food and coffee, and, and, and we instantly just have a rapport, and we talked, and it was great. And it's more of a conversation, and I'm going to try to keep things along th that line. I don't really want to sit there and go, so tell me. You know, I'm not interested. I don't know that I'm that good of an interviewer. And, uh, and there, like I said, there's so many great podcasts uh, from people that are from punk bands and artists and whatnot that, that are going to do it better than I do, um, which shouldn't be the, you know, that shouldn't keep you from doing things. Um, but uh, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But I'm really excited about it, and I hope that when I uh, do make the, the debut episode, uh, you will join me and help spread the word because this is all pretty much a, a one-person operation at this point and it probably will stay that way i can't imagine that uh you know it'll, it'll have a need to have a uh, production staff and you know public public relations person you never know right um okay so let's get to it so it's new year's eve happy new year's uh i hope everybody's doing well uh last year was good for me for the most part there was a, there were some difficulties i got covid which i i uh, i swore i was never going to do and uh, that bummed me out. Uh, it really bummed me out because I was on the road, and it um, because everyone in the crew, our crew, got COVID. We were stranded in Michigan for a week. We missed four or five shows. We were out on the tour with Circle Jerks and uh, Negative Approach. They went on because uh, Circle Jerks are the headliners of the Big Daddies, and Negative Approach were just they're fucking workhorses. They're just dogs, road dogs. You know, they didn't. Somehow they managed to not get COVID, and they rocked out every night, and it was intense every night, and I don't know how they do it. Meanwhile, we're, we're stranded on a bus in the middle of somewhere um, uh, outside of Pontiac, Michigan or something for a week, and we kind of lost our minds. Uh, it was rough, and we were spending money we didn't have, and we weren't making any money, and uh, you know, this is our first tour in four years. It's like, okay, here we go. We're going to do this. We got all these great shows with Circle Jerks, and um, yeah, it was kind of a bummer. But other than that, uh, it was a pretty great, con productive year, and I can't complain too much. Um, I got much grayer, and I'm finally the gray and the white that I always wished my beard would, 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 would take is finally there. It used to be, I, you know, you'd see bit, bits of gray, and there was black, and there was red, and brown, and blotch, and it was just awful. Uh, so I would dye it. I would I would color it in so that you could see the gray right here, but everything else was kind of dark, and it looked kind of cool as far as I'm I was concerned. But you know, it's it's work, uh, and I don't like doing too much work. I don't like to have to uh, worry about that kind of stuff. You know, it's all vanity stuff, right? You know. So happy New Year. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, yesterday. Yesterday was an interesting day. Uh, I woke up uh, feeling kind of at odd at, at odds with things. I, I've got a uh, a personal relationship with someone, a family member, and we're having a difficult time communicating, and it and it really wears on me. 
and uh, it just affects me. It affects it affects my mood, and I you know I do I, I'm like fuck it. I'm gonna go out and get some shit done, but I can I'm still thinking about it, and you know it's just I I, I hate feuding. I hate bickering, uh, especially with people that I that I love. Uh, it's just it's it's just no fun. So I had that going on the night before. Woke up and I'm like fuck it. I'm gonna take take this fucking day on. I'm gonna go for it. Take a shower. Take the dogs out to pee out in the backyard, and and uh, you know it's it's cold, it's it's gray, it's gloomy, it's raining on and off, and windy. Uh, and I said, you know, I'm not going to let this weather get to me. We've we've been having these crazy storms that have, that have been happening here in California, and um, Sacramento, where I'm from, has gotten hit pretty good. Um, power outages. We've had tons of trees. We have beautiful trees in this city. Um, Sacramento's. We it, we we've nicknamed ourselves nicknamed ourselves the city of trees, and um, it really is. We're I think we're the second, but under I think just just below uh, Paris, France, uh, as far as being a, a big city that's noted for its its uh, beautiful trees, big oak trees and all kinds of trees. One of my favorite things about Sacramento, and it's always been one of my favorite things, is that when you're flying out. It, it has to be when it's light out. You're flying uh, out or you're landing. When you look towards the center of town, you know, we've got we've got a downtown area and we've got the high-rise buildings, the skyscrapers and whatnot. You can see the state capitol, uh, the cathedral downtown. Sometimes you can see the, the arena where the kings play, uh, banks, uh, there's a Kaiser Hospital. You can see the courthouse, um, you know, all the main structures that are in our downtown area and it looks like a city right but then beyond that you don't see anything except what looks like a jungle you don't see houses or big buildings or uh you know signs or or you don't see anything you don't see the hustle and bustle of the city because it's just covered in trees when you're up in the air you just look out and it looks just like miles of just lush you know jungle uh and it's it's one of the it's 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 always fascinated me because you know when you get through the trees there's a city going on there you got people going to work and and people that you got you you know uh cars driving it like ass people driving like assholes in their cars and buses and uh our our little light rail train and you got our homeless our little city tent cities uh, it's it's you know it's happening but Again, if when you're in the sky, you don't see any of that stuff, and I I think it's kind of neat. Uh, I always love that about Sacramento. It's one of those things that I always look forward to when I'm flying, and I have a window seat I can check it out. And I I I uh, think if you ever get the chance, you should check it out. I would tell all my friends if you if you're coming to town, make sure you get a window seat. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we've been having trees, f- fallen trees. It's doing some damage, uh, crashing down into cars and on houses. I think there was a fatality a couple days ago. Um, R.I.P. to that poor person. Um, it's just been a mess, and, and and we've had some flooding going on. Like I said, power outages. So it's been kind of crazy, and people are driving like nuts, like they're nuts. And, and so anyway, I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go get get some stuff done. I'm going to go grab some coffee somewhere, sit for about an hour, get on my laptop, and, and catch up on some stuff. I'm going to go to this uh, coffee place over in uh, an area called East Sacramento, the eastern part of, of the midtown part of Sacramento. And East Sacramento is pretty neat. You know, it's clean, uh, f- fairly aff- affluent very affluent in certain points but um definitely not a place where i'll ever be able to afford to uh rent let alone buy anything not that i'm looking uh to buy anything at this point uh but it's kind of a neat part of town and it's got these beautiful old houses tree-lined streets wide streets very very wide streets and some great parks there's a little italy part of, of of east sacramento that's neat some shopping stuff some restaurants markets you know it's it's pretty cool um, and ESAC has, you know, the, the, the streets are numbers. So you've got like 30th, 35th, you know, 40, 42nd street up 50. I think it goes up to 65th, I think is when ESAC ends. And, um, generally speaking, the higher the numbers go, the more affluent it is. And then it kind of goes down in the 60s. But, um, so one, one, the, the main big street 
in East Sacramento. It's it's a huge corridor, long corridor, uh, one of the biggest streets in the in the area. It's called Folsom Boulevard, named after the city of Folsom, where the prison is. Uh, it starts from Midtown Sacramento, and then it travels east, goes from west to east, and it's it goes for miles. It goes through East Sacramento, out into the suburbs. It goes uh, in through this town called Rancho Cordova, up until Folsom, I think, is maybe where it ends. And it's a, it's just a big corridor, a big artery. I go, I'm on Folsom Boulevard at least once a day because I'm going somewhere, uh, and that's a court, that's a major street. Uh, I go to the place I was going to get coffee. The the parking lot's packed, and I look inside, and it's just there's there's no seats. There's it's just wall to wall people. So I'm like, well, fuck that. So I'm thinking about a place that's not far, about a mile away. I get back onto Folsom Boulevard, and about right there, uh, heading east, and about right there is when I always look over, uh, just like a block and a half away, and I see what is I call it my favorite favorite tree it's it's like a tree that I've been sort of I don't want to say in love with um but I've been very fascinated and infatuated with this tree since um 2014 I think is when I first noticed it I've lived in Sacramento most of my life but I never noticed this crazy tree until about 2014 it's not pretty um I'm not sure why I love it so much it's it's big. It's long. It's tall. I think it's so. As far as I can tell, even on if, when I do a, the Google Map thing, you can kind of do that thing where you're in 3D and you can kind of fly over the city. It looks like it's one of the biggest, the tallest trees that I can find on Google. Um, but it's also vast. Like the bra- the branches go way out. It's very wide, expansive, and um, it's just a tree that I'm I'm really fascinated with for some friggin reason I'm gonna show you a photo real quick now this is this is an older photo this is from a few years back um, and in this photo you see that there, there's like a broken branch um, at some point uh, in time I remember um, it being much fuller and uh, let me see if I can find a, a photo of that because this is th- this is a photo I took actually that that photo you're seeing there is from I think it's from Google. Now this photo is is a photo I took myself. It was getting dark and you can see it's much more full. Did you see the difference? There's the the broken branch. I wish I had a pointer almost. But there's something about it and it, and it sits in the backyard of of this house. I'll go back to the photo. You can see there's two little houses right and the the bluish uh, gray house to the right. Uh, the trees in the backyard of of that house, and I've been so tempted. I've occasionally seen some people standing outside of the house, and I will always want to. I think about stopping and saying, "Hey, man, you know, tell me about your tree. What kind of tree is that? You know, um, does it give you problems? You know, do you have a name for it? Well, you know how old it is. I've I have all these questions, and I've done research. I've gotten online. I've asked people in forums about you know tree fans. Say, hey, anybody know the deal with the big tree in East Sac? And nobody knows what I'm talking about. There's a lot of big trees in in, in Sacramento in general, but this one has just been my favorite for a long, long time. I've written songs about it. I've used it in paintings. Uh, I've had dreams about it. I've uh, taken. Uh, people that I care about down the street. This street that it's on is called 55th Street. It's right off of the Folsom Boulevard Street that I mentioned earlier. And I literally, uh, more times than not, I will take the shortcut down 55th Street um, just so I can see my tree. And um, it's just a special thing, and, I, and I'm not sure why. So I, I, I discovered it in 2014, and... You know, always look at it, always always stop and take photos of it and whatnot. And um, the, the first time I saw it, actually, by the way, I was so blown away by it that I pulled my car over, I got out of the car, and I just got as close as I could without looking like a complete fucking creep. And I um, I walked up to it, and I, I looked at it, and I took photos, and, and I just, I, I, you know, I blew a kiss to it. No, I didn't do that, but I wanted to. I was doing it up here, um, and it's just a beautiful tree. When I was standing out there one beautiful – when I the first saw it, and it was a beautiful day out, and uh, the sound of the tree was just like, unlike any other. It was, so, it was so big, and there was so much stuff growing on it. 
that it and it was kind of a little nice breeze going through and it just uh, it was quiet and I just remembered the sound that the tree made and many many times again I've pulled over stopped turned my car off got it not, gotten out just to listen to the rustling of the I, you know I sound like a really crazy hippie right now and I, I, I assure you I'm not really much of a hippie maybe I am but um, this th- things like this sometimes blow me away. It's always nature related, you know, because it's so beyond my comprehension. To be honest, like I don't understand trees and the ocean and that kind of stuff. I do, but I I don't. Um, boy, I could talk about this tree forever. So anyway, here we go. Uh, so yesterday, I'm in my car. I'm driving down Folsom Boulevard. I look over like I normally would as I'm approaching 55th Street to see my tree. And I wasn't even sure I was going to pull over, turn off 55th Street. I think I was going to go down, straight down Folsom and, and do another street. But I look over and I look for my tree and, and I don't see it. And I'm like, shit, maybe I'm not at 55th yet. Maybe I'm down at 53rd or something. But I'm like, no, no, no. I was just at this the coffee place. And then it just, the saddest thought came through my head. The feeling, it was overwhelming. I'm driving, and I said, oh, no. It's been storming, storming like fucking crazy. Trees all over the city are falling. You know, old trees are being uprooted, and they're, they're you know, they're gone. And it, it dawned on me, and I, I, I thought to myself, is my tree gone? Is my tree dead is my tree gone that that's a that's my next hit single um that's gonna be no don't steal it by the way but uh i did i was like my my fucking tree is gone it's it would normally be there i see it almost every day so i i quickly turned left on 55th street and immediately i know the answer because the streets streets blocked off there's work trucks there i can see guys in orange vests there's a huge crane let me see if I can show you the crane. I, this won't do any justice, but I got out, and I got as far as I could because they blocked the street off, and there's this crane thing, which I guess they they use to lift the bigger trunks or, or, or the, the, the branches or whatever. And I I just pulled over, turned the car off, stood outside of my car. And you, can, you can see, again, this was yesterday, you can see the weather. It's gray, it's cold. I think it just did, it, it it just rained just after this, and I see a, uh, pardon me, I see a, um, a worker, and I say, "Hey man, what happened?" And he goes, "Oh, the you know the tree man, it it just blew apart, completely blew apart." And uh, I th- I thought, "How did that happen? I mean, it, it's a crazy huge strong tree. How did, was the wind that bad?" And you know, I start questioning it, whatever. Uh, I was devastated. I was devastated, and I walk up um, to get a clear view. And this is—I took this photo. I'm look. I'm. Di- this is directly across the street, looking at the house. And there's a tr- obviously this tree in front. That my tree uh, is in the backyard, and and the usual visual is like you can see, even though this tree sits there, you can see my tree just blows it out of the fucking scene. Like it's so wide and big and tall. But I look over and there's just a pile of my tree. They had cut cut it into pieces. You can see the branches and the and, and everything toward the left. And um I just I, I couldn't I couldn't fathom it. I was just like so fucking bummed out and, and, and just devastated. I, I texted Allison. Now this is just after she had said she had texted me about 20 minutes before and shared a screenshot of a conversation that was on Facebook of a, between a couple friends and he and he had alluded to uh, you know I'm gonna miss him or I you know I wish I would have I, I you know I wish I would have gone and see him when I had a chance it was very sort of it was like vague posting but it clearly referenced losing somebody so I got on just before all this stuff I got on and I found out it was Jeff Beck the guitar legend uh, British you know the rock god guy um and uh so that was already sad news you know we the world has lost jeff beck jeff jeff beck passed away i think he was 78 uh 79 um from meningitis and it's weird with jeff beck because here's this guy who you know we all know that he's he's pushing 80 
He's been around forever. He's like one of the legends. You know, you got Jimmy Page and Eric Clapton and, and fucking Jeff Beck, right? But uh, anytime you see photos of Jeff Beck, current photos or video or whatever, he's he's pretty spry. Like he looks good. He looks fit. Uh, he's got his hair. That might be a wig. I'm not sure. <clears throat> but he he looks good for his age, and he and he's still out there doing it. And so many people um, who have met Jeff Beck. It turns out I know a lot of people that have worked with him in some form or whatever capacity. They all say the same thing. He was just such a down to earth nice guy, and he always, you know, was willing to give everybody time, and and uh, he, he just was a, a really cool guy. And I wasn't, uh, I was into Jeff Beck uh, very, it was a short period of my life back in the 70s um, after he left the Yardbirds, which of course included J- Jimmy Page and Eric Clapton. Um, he started his own solo thing. He had, I think, the Jeff Beck group. And uh, he had, a, they had a couple great records. I, I uh, Beck Ola was, uh, was the name of one of them, and I forget the other one. Um, might have just been the Jeff Beck group. I remember it had this song, I'm going down, 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 down. It's just like a rocker. Um, and uh, at some point, you know, uh, Rod Stewart, a young Rod Stewart sang for him and, and Ron Ronnie Wood. And he was just a legend. And it's very, very sad uh, that we're losing our, 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 you know, anybody. But it's sad when you grew up listening uh, and, and just being aware of this, this big, bright, sh- talented star and and, uh and they're gone they're gone and i guess it was a kind of a a uh quick uh illness that crept up i'm i don't know all the details i shouldn't talk like i do but anyway that was already the so we were we already uh are sad because of the jeff beck thing and now my tree's gone and um it really took everything i i everything in me to um to kind of get that clear in my head and, and kind of decide how I, f- what, what I'm going to do about it. <laughs> you know, like, uh, there's not anything you can do, right? The tree's gone. By the way, the tree is now, there's a, um, you can't, it's hard to see in this photo, but if you look in between the two houses, there's a tree stump. It's about, I think it's about a nine, 10 foot high tree stump. That's what's left of my tree. And I don't know what it means. If can can a tree still grow? You know, once they cut it all, they chop it to pieces. Does the, does the stump grow? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure how that works. But that's all that's left, basically, in that in that wood. And I'm not sure what you do with that wood. I guess you can. Uh, can you burn it? I'm not sure. Anyways, very very sad. Now I, th- that brings me to uh, a, a a connected story. Um, that is a little more serious. Well, I don't know what's more serious than than losing life or whatever. But back in 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 2019, the start of 2019, I had become a student again. I had taken a semester of uh, an art art class, a figure drawing class, at uh, our local one of our local community colleges. And I did so knowing that I didn't really have anything planned. I was slowing down touring and kind of burnt out on doing my own solo tour. Seven Seconds had it split up, and I just was I was kind of wrapped up in my own art world. I'd started my own art studio, Riving Loom, and I was really into it, and I kind of wanted to just stick close to home. I didn't want to be far away from Allison and the dogs and the cats. And um, I said, fuck it, I'll take this class, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do the entire semester. I'm not going to fucking flake. I'm just going to be like I'm going to do it and I'm going to get an A or you know A+. Plus. By the way, if you take an art class and you can't get an A, um I don't I don't I don't know who I don't know you. Um it's it's a it's usually a pretty easy uh class to get an A. But anyway, so I was into it and it, it was giving me this sort of incentive to like think about new things and and get my mind a little wrapped around something different it's it's interesting anytime i've i've gone back to community college i've done it like three or four times now um i start getting kind of fancy in my brain like look at me i'm a student i'm walking to campus you know i've got like a you know i'll even buy a t-shirt a a, a, the school t-shirt that i never wear but you know, I just get caught up in it because it's kind of like when you're on campus, you're like you even if you're doing like it's just art 
or whatever, uh, I, I instantly feel smarter and I, and I like the feeling, even if it's all based on bullshit. Um, and I don't know if that's ever going to change and maybe it's not bullshit, but you know, it just, I feel, I kind of also feel out of place. I'm like, you know, these people, these kids, cause I'm always like the oldest, I'm older than the professors and the, and the, the teachers and whatnot. Um, I always kind of think like, you know, they're just getting started. They get, they get, they're career minded and they're idealistic and they're, you know, who knows, maybe they'll become the next mayor or the next, you know, uh, attorney general or whatever the fuck engineers and, and whatnot. And then there's just me, you know, dumpy me walking around with my coffee and my backpack and, you know, grumbling about, you know, whatever. But anyway, I was excited about it and I had started, I was experienced, I've experienced, um, anxiety my entire life. And I really didn't even know what it was when it would happen when I was younger. Um, I would just say, oh, you know, didn't, didn't get enough sleep or, you know, drank too much caffeine or something. I was, I would, there was always some idea that I caused this myself. As I became more of an adult, which really didn't kick in until I was, you know, 35, 40 years old, um, I would they would become more frequent and it, uh, there would be triggered by things. It was usually stress, be, me being stressed out about money or, you know, back when I was having, I mean, I still have teeth issues. They don't look great. But when I was really having painful teeth issues or I was having uh, some health stuff, I had gallstones at one point that I needed to get dealt with. Um, that caused some stress. Financially, money has always been an issue. Uh, bickering again with family members or, or close friends um, that would cause stuff just you know the basic shit it would trigger and I would I would feel this you know my my head was all swirly or I'd I'd have heart uh, palpitations or it would always kind of it would always kind of manifest itself in different ways um, but then it, it just started to get more and more when Allison and I started our ca cafe business in 2001 uh, all of a sudden, I, I was taking on um, responsibilities that I hadn't taken on in a long time, and I wasn't touring. I wasn't doing what I was used to doing and what was normal for me. I was be, trying to be responsible and trying to be like a boss and trying to be like a, a you know a helpful, constructive business owner. And it it just it 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 worked against me, and I became uh, very isolated and very uh moody and pissy and just not a very pleasant person especially uh for Allison and I didn't really understand it until later how much of how much it impacted her and us and um that's about when I said I got to get this shit looked at I got I got I got to get some therapy uh, you know, to deal with trauma, it was all trauma related childhood stuff that, that I don't talk about a whole lot. Um, just, 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 it, it's definitely, it starts there. Um, and, um, I hadn't dealt with it. I just said, screw it. I've, I've functioned this, this far in life. I might as well just keep going. Right. You know, um, which is, I think what, what we do, um, a lot of the times, um, but I, I, so I did, I started going to therapy and I got on some meds and it was kind of helping once they figured out what was working for me and it, and it helped, it helped me. Um, and then I got back into kind of meditation and trying to work out more. I was swimming a lot and that helped out a lot and, and just getting my mind kind of just adjusted a little bit. But in 2019, uh, the the anxiety had come back, but it was it was it was manifesting itself in a, in a completely different way. Now, instead of just getting that anxious like uh, fight or f f fight or flee or whatever it's called feeling, where I just got to get out uh, and just get away from whatever uh, perceived problem I'm I'm experiencing. Um, there's this sense of disassociation, and I know a lot of people talk about this, and I'm not super well trained I uh, researched about this but I would literally feel like uh, you know they some people say well it feels like you're outside of yourself looking at yourself I don't know if it's anything like that for me it's always more of just I'm fully aware that something is not right and I am viewing my life and my feelings from a different point I'm not viewing it from the inside of me I'm not all connected and um, that alone creates this sort of sense of panic, like because a, I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing this. What have I done to to create this feeling? 
um, what's triggering it. Sometimes it's, it can, I can hear a song, and it, it's a song that goes takes me back to when I was a kid, back when, you know, my poor single, you know, mom was trying to raise three kids in poverty, and we were on welfare, and we were homeless sometimes, and there were these predatory males that were, you know, they were trying to prey on her, and they tried to prey on uh, preying on us, and there were, you know, it was just violence and, and drugs and, and uh, uh, being over-sexualized at an early age, just various things that I've just ignored my entire life because I, I just was like, if I, if I go down this road, if I start thinking about this shit now and trying to deal with it at, at, at 58 and 59 and 60 and 61... You know, I mean, who's got who's got time for that, right? You know, it's all unreasonable. It's irrational, but it's just the way you 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 kind of compartmentalize it or whatever in your in your in your in your being. And at the same time, you know, I'm like I'm functional. I do shit. I get shit done. You know, I I do this and I do that and I travel and I you know I've got this great wife and da da da. da. So you know, I start to go no no no. I'm all right. You know, it, it's other people that have these issues. I'm all right. Anyway, this this sense of being disconnected from myself really fucking freaked me out, and I noticed it happening a lot. Um, just before I'd w- just just after I'd wake up, I'd wake up, I'd be laying there in bed, maybe I'd check my phone, and it, once the the brain kicks in and starts thinking about, okay, what do you got going on today? You know, what do you got to do today? What do you got to look forward to today? Or, oh boy, shit, there was that overdraft on your bank statement now we got to figure out how to move money if i got money to 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 cover that just basic shit like that Uh, and then once i once i start thinking about it that's when it seems to kind of go haywire now sometimes i can just get up pee and if i jump or you know i'll go out and pet the dogs or hug the dogs and i feel fine sometimes i just need to get some fresh air and i'll open the back door look outside step outside and breathe some air and it's nice and things feel normal again and i'm like all right i can do this um sometimes i'll get in the shower and i'll feel fine but sometimes i don't sometimes something about the shower and the feeling of this the 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 the, the humidity i guess from the steam there seems to be some kind of trigger in that and i've talked to therapists about this and there's there's certain theor- theories i don't want to get into Nonetheless, I've I've in two thousand early two thousand nineteen I was I had a, a, a about a three month run where I was really going through it. It was tough. I was having uh, these moments where time would just go by and I wasn't I couldn't account for hours of time. I'd kind of come to I I wasn't sleeping that I that I know of. I wasn't out or unconscious. I would just dawn on me kind of like when I remember smoking pot and. Uh, just I'd sit there and I'd think oh, I'm not stoned. I can I can totally talk, have a normal conversation. But then I'd realize I'm not having a normal conversation. I'm, what I'm saying is kind of gibberish because I'm not I'm not of my right mind. I don't even. And then it would scare the shit out of me. It's one of the reasons I didn't really embrace smoking pot when I was younger. I tried, but it just was like it, it was scary to me. But it's it's kind of similar to that. I just I'm like, wait, what just how did time f- go and why am I not aware of the time that just happened? And it's just a it's a it's a mind fuck. It's all I can say. Anyway, let's get back to the tree. So during this time, I would go over to to see the tree and just drive down the street and check it out. And I remember one day, it was kind of a funky day. I pulled, went down 55th Street off of Folsom Boulevard. I went down 55th. I stopped in front, uh, across the street from the tree. And um, I said, uh, I'm going to get out. I'm just going to get out and, and listen to the, the sound. I got out. And like I said, it was kind of a, a weird day. Kind of like it looks like in this photo without the, fun, the fancy filter. But I remember going out and I... The minute I stepped out and shut my door, I heard the sound of the the rustling of of that of my tree. And um, instead of f- sounding beautiful like it normally did in the past, it sounded ominous. And it probably was the sky was gray. It felt like it was going to start raining. It was a little bit of a breeze, a wind. And I just looked up at this fucking tree, and it just looked freaky to me. It looked ominous and like like evil almost and I kicked into this fucking weird panic attack I don't know why but I was kind of frozen I just stood there looking up at the tree feeling terrified 
and I could hear the, the rustling of the leaves or whatever the fuck, and I couldn't hear anything else, and I just wanted to get back in my car and go. There's the first kind of time where that I wasn't just, you know, going, look at my tree, look at my big boy. Yes, you are. You are a big, beautiful boy tree, or maybe not a boy tree, I don't know. Uh, and I just got in my car, and I had to leave, and that was weird. And for months after, I couldn't drive down that street, I would go down Folsom, and usually, like I said, down Folsom, you can see the top of, you can, it's such a big tree, you could see it from, uh, you know, a block and a half, two blocks away. I wouldn't look at it. I was just like, nope, don't want to see it. <coughs> I don't want that, that weirdness to kick in again. Um, and it was that way for a little while, a couple months, and uh, eventually, you know, I got through it. I had written a song about it called The Greatest Tree. That's kind of a weird, I was also, oh, let me, backpedal a little bit, backtrack a little bit. During this time, I was, uh, like I am now, writing a bunch of songs every month. I was doing this thing called, the, uh, I started this thing called the Die Hard Faithful Club. It was a subscription-based thing. People who paid into it would get new songs every month from me. And at that time, I was writing 10 songs a month. Uh, good or bad, I just wrote 10 songs, and then the subscribers would get these songs. I had kicked into this, I had started uh, weird tunings, which I never have gotten into, and I haven't really since just tuning my, my guitar differently and writing and recording songs in that tuning. And it, it really took on a whole new kind of sinister sound uh, that, that, it, that, that doesn't sound like me. Uh, I think I, I ended up writing and recording about five songs during that, that period that had this tuning, and it just gave it this really weird feeling. Melancholy, but kind of scary. I can't, I can't describe it. Uh, and I, anyway, I recorded these songs, and I, I put it up on my Bandcamp page, and I and I gave it a fake band name. I called it Deep Fakes. So if you're on my Bandcamp page and you see Deep Fakes, that's that material. But anyway, it was an odd time, and I don't know what how I adjusted it in order to feel normalized again. Not that I not that I feel terribly normal now necessarily, but. Uh, I don't, I don't, I haven't had one of those, uh, those weird dis, disassociative panic attack dealios in a while. I've had some in, in interesting um, migraine stuff, the ocular uh, migraine thing, which it affects your vision and, and it just fucks with your eyes. It actually happened on this last tour with the Circle Jerks a couple times. And it happened in Austin, Texas, just before uh, we went on stage and I was terrified that it was going to just affect everything luckily it didn't but um anyway i don't know what i don't know what this rant and ramble is about but i just thought i would share that with you i'm 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 gonna miss my tree uh very very much so uh, i really love that tree and I, and, I, and i don't i'm not sure um you know i'm sure in a month i will uh be fine and uh i'll just i'll i'll just be happy knowing that uh, I, for for a few years, I got to I discovered this tree that had been around forever, probably, and um, I can I can I can kind of just enjoy the fact that I had I felt a, a a little connection with this tree. I don't know what it means. I don't know if it means anything. I don't know that I care that much, but uh, I really uh, I love the tree. Uh, R.I.P. Jeff Beck. Uh, thank you to each and every one of you for listening slash watching this. Um, and let's just keep doing it. I, I've got some ideas. I'm hoping that I, I'll, I'll, I'll try them out. I'd like to set up, um, I, I've had a Discord, uh, channel, whatever, for a long time. I've never used it, but I'd like, I wouldn't mind having, uh, the Discord running when I do these. I'd like to do some of these live and have, um, people hang out with me and, um, and, and we can have banter and maybe it'll inspire me to, to, uh, I don't know, do something for the, for the, for the actual podcast. But, um, by the way, t to just my listening folks, uh, I apologize. I, I just realized that I've been showing images on the visual version of this, the podcast, the video version that you can't see. So, uh, it, it makes more sense probably for, probably for you to in the future watch uh, the YouTube video, uh, instead of just listening because, uh, then, you know, you might miss out on some, 
cool fucking images that I've got going on. So anyway, a happy new year, everybody. Uh, much love to you all. Thank you for the love and support. Um, as always, you can, if you feel like it, and please do not feel pressured in any way. I'm not, I don't like being a salesman, but um, I do get uh, cash donations and, and uh, through my PayPal, which you can, uh, so you can PayPal me stuff at rivingloomarts at gmail dot com, um, or Venmo me at Kevin Seconds, and uh, I assure you that the money that I make off that will go right back into my little studio here. And um, I don't have I don't really have a need to buy gear. I've got everything I need, so it's just really for just the uh, maintaining the the rent and whatnot. Uh, but if you can't or you don't just don't want to, that's totally cool. Um, it's, it's not about the, the money. It's, it's about, the the, uh, the tree, my beautiful tree that's no longer with us anymore. Uh, all right. Much love. Take care. We'll talk soon, hopefully. Okay. Goodbye.